Good evening, good evening, and thank you for joining the mic session. I'm your host, D. Jarrell, tuning in from Indianapolis, Indiana, and joining us my co-host, Marcus, from Orlando, Florida, and today's topic is Women to Call, the Men Call. But before we get into that, let me welcome our special guest to the session, Brother Mark McCray from Houston, Texas. Brother McCray, welcome, and how are you? Thank you so much. I am blessed. I'm excited to be with you gentlemen today, so let, let's jump into it. This is going to be a lot of fun today. Today we're talking about women called and men called, and when I say that, I'm referring to why are there more women attending the church than men. This is an interesting topic, the one that is often talked about. So, Brother McCray, let me ask you a question. Um, I know that going to church is a place where you should go and assemble yourself with believers, but in your opinion, do you think that the church needs to cater its services to attract more men to attend church? Well, in, in my opinion, I would say absolutely so. I mean, to me, there's no, there's no question, there's no doubt. So I'll share a little bit more about my background later, but before I jump into your question, I'll just let people know the point of view that I have. I come from a – I am a church guy. I believe – I am a believer. I am a Christian. I believe in being involved in the life of the church. So I don't come at these things in terms of – an outsider critic, I come in ter- I come at these things in terms of an insider who's concerned and I am I am passionately concerned about the word of God. I'm passionately concerned about the health of the church and I'm passionately concerned about bringing the kingdom of God to pass in our realm. Now my background has been mostly uh in entrepreneurship, and I've been an entrepreneur, I've, I've run my own business for several years, and also I've been deeply involved in, in full-time staff, ministry, and other forms of, of lay ministry and even uh, uh, other types of leadership within the church for years. So, but to go, so that's my point of view, and I just share that to say that a lot of people come at their criticisms and critiques of the church as outsiders, and they are quick uh, to say that they don't get involved and, you know, <laughs> they'll they'll say a criticism or they'll say a critique and they'll say immediately after that, well, that's why I stay home. That's not my point of view, uh, gentlemen. In fact, uh, I'm deeply concerned, deeply involved. Now, to answer your question, should a church or should, should worship bodies, should fellowships cater their uh, ministries to attract more men? Well, I would say... I said yes right away, and and if you'll give me a second, let me develop the thought because I can take it down two different paths. Number one, I would say that if you have to make a choice, I would say absolutely yes. Now, the the other side of that, let's bring some balance to the issue. I don't really think we have to make a change. I just think we have to teach the full counsel of God. And if we teach the full counsel of God, then all people would be drawn, male, female, black, white, Latino, Asian, young, old. And so I I say that again just as foundation because I think what we see in a lot of facets of the body of Christ is that we aren't really handling the gospel the way the gospel should be handled. So uh, I don't want to take you off track of your question, but I just want to suggest to people that men are not fa- fundamentally unspiritual. Men are not fundamentally less spiritual than women. Men are not uh, at a core level unconcerned about their spirituality or the things of God. Uh, if that were the case, then Jesus made a horrible mistake by choosing his core disciples to be male. So what I would suggest to people that there may be some ways in which we need to shift the way we approach doing church, quote unquote, uh, because apparently, uh, just statistically speaking, we may not be in a place that pleases God right now. Does, does that make sense as a response? So, Absolutely. So I w- yeah. So so I would say sure. Uh, the, the better answer is let's teach the full counsel of God. That's the best answer because in doing that, the purity of the gospel will draw all men unto Christ. And, you know, that famous famous uh, hymns and, and scriptures that say such. So now, failing that, or if we feel as if we have a hard time with that concept, I think that we should in some worship fellowships be overly aggressive to draw more men to attract and retain men into our churches. 
because in my view, and again, I, I say my view, statistics are statistics are statistics, and if any of your listeners really want to research any of this, there's there are two really good books on this, and I'll say the names slowly along with the authors so that they can go and do their research themselves. But there's a, a wonderful book. It's an easy read. It's called Why Men Hate Going to Church, and it's by David okay. Morrow. Why Men Hate Going to Church, and the premises of his book is similar to mine. He says men love God but hate going to church, and so he examines why is that. And it's more of a sociological study. He interviews people. He, he, he talks to people. He does statistical uh, work on it, and it's really refreshing because uh, you're, you, you're a man of God. I'm a man of God. I know that I'm not the only one that has been in certain churches or certain church services and sit around and say, okay, well, where are the brothers? You know, it's like me and, you know, nine sisters in this prayer meeting or me and uh, that guy over there and that guy over there, but that's it. So, so David Morrow kind of comes at it from that angle of why men hate going to church but yet love God or love Jesus, and that's a, that's a great book. The second book. Yes, I, uh, before you go on, I've read that book myself, and it. And to our listeners, I want to say that book really opened up the thought process of understanding who you are as a man and what may be keeping you away from attending church on a regular basis. And when you do, what is happening to you? What you're experiencing? I think that's one of the things I got out of reading that book. Go ahead, uh, Mark, absolutely. with your second book. No, absolutely, absolutely. That's that's a great that's a great 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 point. Now there is a second one, and and maybe you've read this one as well, but it's called the Church Impotent. It's called the Church Impotent, and it's by Leon Podles. That's P O D L E S. The Church Impotent, and it's a more it's more of a historical study. So he sort of traces. Uh, as, as best as you can in, in, in a book of this type, but he sort of looks at the history of the church from, say, the book of Acts and when the first foundations of the church were laid and, and how it became, in, in a lot of ways, uh, overly feminized in, some, in this author's point of view to what we have today, whereby there are churches you can go in and look on a, on a Sunday morning, and you're going to see a 60, 65, maybe even 70% female to male ratio. And if you go on a midweek service, say Tuesday night or Wednesday night Bible study, depending on your your faith fellowship, you may have an 80-20 uh, ratio. So those are a couple books to sort of get into it. Uh, I like them because they don't come at it with just criticism. They do come at it with, with suggestions. And, and as you said, uh, ways that men, that we ourselves can look at that and what we're doing to ourselves, to our families, and to our communities when we recuse ourselves from being involved in the things of God. So, again, that's a, sort of a five-minute answer to a simple question. Forgive me for that, but uh, I, I do think we should be more intentional. Well, we welcome the uh, thoughts that you have, brother. So uh, getting a little further into the discussion, you were saying the full gospel, if the full gospel is taught, it would bring more people no matter what the person is and what the age is. What part of the gospel do you think or that you see is probably not being taught to, uh, to the brethren or the sisters of the church that is causing several of them to want to stay away, whether it's men or women that may be wow. staying away from the church? What do you see is missing? Wow, wow, what a question. <laughs> that is that is a that's a very very difficult topic to to handle. I'll I'll handle it. I'll try to handle it briefly and then let's go a little bit more deep. I'll I'll, I'll give a briefer answer and then, you know, you throw me a follow-up question and then let's explore this thing together. I I you know, okay. I'd say four things. I I'd say four things right off the top just in terms of laying a foundation are uh reasons why there are more women than men, and then we'll get into how that might be reflected and how we handle the actual Word of God. But I think that, uh, and you'll you'll kind of hear some hints in there as I go through them, but the four main reasons that I think we see in, in this, uh, especially from a minority point of view, a lot of uh, African-American churches, which uh, uh, 
a lot of us may come from, or at least I do, have, not not exclusively, but heavily. And I'd say number one, women are easier to pastor. So that's that's one thing. Now, they're again not trying to sound sexist, but in a lot of ways, it is easier to lead uh, certain folks. And I think a lot of a lot of uh, females, and, and it, get, it gets into a lot of the core of I believe how they're wired more supportive, more uh, malleable in terms of the heart, easier to lead. I think, number two, the liturgy, the terminology, the sermons, the songs, the worship style in a lot of our churches have become highly feminized. And so we see this in terms of we have a lot of these, I call them Jesus is my lover songs, you know, songs that uh you know I you know lord I, I long to to be in your arms and and I want to be caressed by you type worship music that a lot of people don't realize becomes alienating to a lot of people uh okay. n- number 3 n- number 3 I think there is a little bit of uh abuse in the local leadership I think be- because of because of the first reason I think that there are Unfortunately, there are a number of insecure leaders in our churches, in my view, and and they sort of take on this this cock of the walk mentality, which is you know one rooster, no everybody else has to be hens, and uh, and again that's a difficult thing to handle. I don't mean to criticize anybody specifically. A lot of churches these days are really more social than they are active. And in the communities and in our families, so uh, you know, a, a number of my male friends are really big on that point. When they they say that there's an old saying that men bond shoulder to shoulder, which means that it's it's easier to get men tied into a vision if they're moving, if if we're working, if we're working shoulder to shoulder. So so I think that those are some of the the four main things that I that I've observed, and again, a lot of these are supported in these these readings, but, you know, so how, so your question, though, how do we handle the gospel? How does this reflect on how we're handling the gospel? Wow. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, you, you should write a book on that question alone, but I think <laughs> you, you, you really should, but and I, I'm humbled to even tackle it because this is just Wow, I'll say well, this. Well, right it's all right. It's all right. It's just I. I think the points that you made was very valid, and I never really thought about it that way, but it's absolutely true. Because when he, when he was talking, I'm listening. I'm like, wow. Because some of the some of the men, I think they don't want to. They don't want to feel that way. They want to feel macho and feel tough. You know, women are more extremely emotional. Women they more. Um, they have. They look for the zeal that comes with going to church more than men. I think and. Most guys just well, focus right. on just being that way. And women, they, they tend to get that, in my opinion, I think they go to church to get that spiritual connection that they desire more than men. Right. And, 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 and I think it's really dangerous, too. I think we have to, I think your forum that you've created here is actually helping to solve the problem. And, I, and I'll tell you why I say that is because we have to begin to shift the definition of what it means to be spiritual See, being spiritual right. isn't just crying when the oil falls on your head. It isn't right. just, uh, you know, it isn't just falling out because you're overcome with emotion when you get a word of prophecy. It, it, it. I'm not negating those experiences. Those are valuable experiences. But the Holy Spirit also moves when He tells us to. Put in an extra fifteen minutes at work so you can do a little bit better for your family. You know the exactly. the, the, the work of the, the work of the Holy Spirit is also present when He tells a man, "You don't need to go to Hooters tonight. Go home. You know, spend some time with your wife." <laughs> you know, th- so so our definition of what it is to be spiritual, and this is why you you two men are doing great with this forum. Our definition of what it means to means to be spiritual has to has to shift a little bit as well, and in doing so, our wives, our sisters, our mothers, our leaders will stop looking at 
saved men as being somehow less than. And so that ends up being a lot of what we see. We we end up seeing ourselves as less than. A lot of women see us as less than. And as a result, we are not often encouraged in our role, in our proper roles and places in the church. But 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 wow, guys, you know, I'm, I'm talking a lot. I mean, we, we need to get back to this issue of how the gospel is handled. Uh, I'll follow your lead with that. But I think you kind of hear some some of my inklings and some of my leanings and, and even how I've answered so far. Yes, uh, I just want to remind our listeners, along with us, D. Jarrell and myself, Marcus, we have a good uh, conversation going here on Mike's session today. I'm really enjoying listening to the thoughts that the brother has. One of the things that you were talking about is looking at the full gospel and that I was reading in your article and also, uh, I believe I was reading the book uh, to take it a little further. What about what would you say about the atmosphere of the church? Because you were talking about the worship and how uh, some songs talk about longing uh, for God and uh, uh, to be in his arms and things of that nature. But what about maybe the atmosphere of the church, how the church is decorated? Does that call more men to the church? Does it call more women to the church? Uh, what are your thoughts wow. on that? Wow. Wow. Um... Wow, you are really not bashful today. You're going all the way at the, the tough stuff. Well, <laughs> see, see, y'all have to remember, there are people who know me, and I've been in some of these churches, and so they're going to be listening to this. They're going to go on my Facebook page. I'm going to post it, and they're going to say, wow, Mark, I didn't know you felt, felt that way. But but I've, I've gone to places of worship, and, and we still have this whole gospel thing hanging out there, and I want to get back to it, but... But just the atmosphere. Now there are there are ministers who are aggressively doing something about this, by the way. But I've been in churches, large and small, where you go in and the entire decor is combinations of pink, lavender, and purple. And and again, I'm not trying to sound sexist. I'm not trying to sound overly macho, chauvinistic as well. But a lot of times our environments really look Again, it's more to is this a social club or is this an organization that's about winning the world? And and that really touches on that how we handle the gospel issue because, listen, man, uh, Jesus is our friend. He is our big brother. He is the first fruit. He, is our, yes. he, he sent a comforter. He is all of those things, but he's also Lord, Master, Ruler, the Commander of an Army, the Lord of Hosts. He's, he is he is he he he. The Bible tells us is coming back to triumph over our enemy, and that's that's a militaristic term. You know, uh, in, in ancient Rome, when when a when the army when the Roman army was when they were triumphant. It wasn't just that they won a battle. It's that they stripped the enemy of all his power and brought him in naked, in chains, to be ridiculed by the citizens of Rome. That, that's what a triumph is. And so, we, we, so when you talk about handling the gospel, I think one of the things when I talk about teaching the full gospel, it's not that we're doing anything necessarily wrong. It's that we are forgetting that Jesus is the commander of a great host, myriads of angels. He's, he's, he's coming back triumphant. He's coming back to finally put an end to all of the stress and the, the sin and the, the, the strain and to really triumph over our enemy, which is to drag him before us in chains, naked to be ridiculed. And, and there's just so much, there's power in that. And so um, we have to, I think, be careful, back to the environment now, I think we have to be careful that we we don't alienate or make certain groups feel uncomfortable now we we're talking about male female today but there could be there could be ethnic applications of this as well i mean um okay. on both on, on both sides so we we want to be careful that we don't have idolatrous imageries of blonde and blue eyed jesus everywhere because that's going to create images in our minds 
and alien and risk alienating certain ethnicities from embracing God as someone who cares about them because they can only associate that image with oppression. Uh, on the other hand, that doesn't mean we want. Um, and I don't. I think I'm considerably older than you men. Maybe I don't know if y'all remember Good Times, but they have the 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 black Jesus that was really Ned the Wino from around the corner. So we 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 don't want we don't want to all go the other direction and make Jesus into Afrocentric in the sense that we consider Afrocentrism. I mean, Jesus probably. He he would be concerned about the downtrodden, but he probably would not be wearing a dashiki if he were here today. So, so we have to be careful. You know, God warns us over and over throughout Scripture not to make images, and because they create idols in the mind. And it's the same thing with our environments. We if we have overly feminized environments, we are actually creating idols in our minds. We are we are telling people whether intentional or unintentional subconsciously that God is um, he's a wonderful interior decorator, but we forget to say that God, you know, and, and he's caring and he's soft and he's loving, come one, come all, but we also have to remember and reflect so in our environment that he is the Lord of hosts. He's the Lord of an army, and he, he's here to conquer and reign. Good stuff. Yes, Good question good about... What you were saying about uh, God being triumphant, I, I really understand that with Jesus being triumphant. And I think that's part of the decor of the environment to show that even if a person, man or woman, if they have a, a come from a lifestyle that was maybe a little more harsh or hardened, uh, as, as we call yeah. some people, uh, uh, maybe out in the street or really out in the world, not just out in the world, but really out in the world and come from hardened environments, uh, do you think maybe the emotional environment of the church, uh, let's speak a little bit about that. We talk about the gospel, but let's talk about the emotional environment. Do you think that may cause some uh, more hardened women to stay away from the church or the church drama cause men to stay away from the church? What do you think about that? <laughs> wow. Um well, I know I didn't blog about church drama, so I think you're. I mean, I I, I appreciate you for coming with that topic. <laughs> you're on your own with that one. I know I didn't write anything on that. I I just, but yeah, you know, I I I don't know. I I think that, I think that you might be touching on, you know, the the church hurt type issue with that, where yeah. a lot of people yeah. deal with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where a lot of people have dealt with so much. You know, we can say drama as a word, but I think drama, even some, for some people, that's too light of a word because really it, it could be trauma, <laughs> you know, where we've invested so much of our identity into a group of people and then those people betray us or or, or let us down. And so the the emotional environment of the church, yeah, I mean, I think you're dead on. I think, I think for the most part, guys, a lot of men that I know anyway, and that's a lot of men, I mean a lot of men throughout um, leaders and otherwise in church, really don't want to be involved with a lot of the drama and over-emotionalism. Now, we, we have to remember, I'm saying over-emotionalism because emotion is a good thing. I think emotion is a great thing. I think one of the, the – if we, if we men want to point the fingers at ourselves with this a little bit, I would say that we – we try to be the uh, the the rock too often, and we don't show emotion when we should, and we don't raise our hands and praise when we should, and so we're trying to be cool. But it breaks my heart just as we we're talking about environment and lavender and rose pink. But guys, I, I have to be honest, and this is a challenge to the men listening, and it's a challenge to myself next time I walk into the doors of the of the, of the church. I, I get just as heartbroken when praise service is going on and the men are standing there with hands in their pocket. So, oh. you know, men are always to pray. We ought to praise God. We ought to lift our hands. We ought to be involved in the emotional. We ought to be the emotional center of the church. But I, I, you're right. I think the over emotionalism of some churches really is. It really turns some people away. Uh, <laughs> I can't. 
you know, you talked about some turning some women away. Um, man of God, you're you're kind of on your own with that. I don't know how to speak to that <laughs> issue. Hey, Mr. Brother Mark, but, do you think that um, do you think that more men are afraid of accountability they will have if they go to church? Do I do I think men are afraid of the accountability? Yes. And, um, they feel that they go to church, they have to be this way and you know look this way and look that way, and, and I feel if they don't go, they can just do what they want to do. You're, you're always going to have some men who who feel that way. I think that. I think that a lot of men, and again, I hope the men are listening to this, or, you, or and I'll help you guys get this into the hands of some men, because I don't want to sound as if I'm totally bashing the system. That's kind of where we started, but but I can tell with your question, we're kind of looking at ourselves a little bit now. Uh, I think that yeah. a lot of us men are afraid of the accountability, but I think more than that, we're afraid of let we're afraid of letting people down. We're afraid of looking like a fraud. We're afraid okay. that if we it, that 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 somebody's going to. It's like the Wizard of Oz thing. A lot of men I know are afraid of being something or trying to be something, and then having other people accuse them or find out that they aren't that. So we draw back and don't give any instead of giving a little bit. Where what we have to do, we have to realize that there's a blessing in that raised hand. There's a blessing in that going to service and, 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 and fellowshipping with the saints and and, and uh, there's a blessing in worshiping with the brothers and God is going to meet us there. He's going to meet us there. He's not going to show us to be a fraud. He's not going to, um, you know, you talk about accountability. Yes, there is a burden to accountability. I know it myself when you're responsible for the women in your lives at some level or you're responsible for children, um, you know, you've got a you've got a fourteen year old, I've got a thirteen year old. There is a burden to that, but we can't be afraid of that. See, we have to okay. see this is this is part of what it is to be a man. To be a man is to charge forward into the fight. And so we have to we have to encourage one another in that that yes, I'm I'm agreeing with your premise. A lot of men are afraid of the accountability that comes with stepping forward, but that's not what it is to be a man. We've got to step forward anyway and trust that God is going to meet us there because it's not just in our own strength. We gotta believe God that He's going to meet us there and and, and, and be strong for us. Okay. Marcus Y'all got me preaching today. Y'all got me preaching. Is, uh, I'm, saying, I'm glad I'm glad for the forum. I'm, I'm glad to see what you all are doing here. Well, thank you for being on the show with us today, Mark. Uh, this this is really a good forum. I think we only touched a little bit of the topic. We tried to get a little bit of different topics uh, uh, covered and a little bit of different thoughts, not only what you wrote in your article, but as well as some of the different things that we every now and then we try to throw people a curveball of a question to see what what they think, and uh, I think you handled it well. I think it's very good to have you on the show. I hope we can have you on the show again sometime soon to continue to look at more parts of this topic. As I sign off today, I want to thank you for coming on the show today, Mark, as well as with DJ Rell. This has been your host, Marcus. Remember that love is a work of choice, and it is a verb. It's something that you do. Remember the only thing you should be controlled by is love. May you love well, and may you live outrageously for Christ. We'll talk to you next time.